That's the, the first one. The second one is the Vietnamese. They fought off the, the France and the United States for 30 years. They had one focus and the war and the occupation of our country. Ho Chi Minh lived on rice just like everybody else. And guess what happened? They succeeded. Okay, lady in the fifth row. Uh, don't you think that the, neighbor, that the neighboring Arab countries should interfere in the conflict to avoid this auto-destruction, hence to avoid Palestine become their own worst enemy? Akram Baka. Um, neighboring countries, you mean Jordan and Egypt? Lib uh, Lebanon, for example, Syria. I mean, I think Lebanon's got to take care of its own problems. Um, <laughs> Jordan, um, I mean, we, would, we all hope that Jordan and Egypt would play a, a positive role in Palestine, um, but I neither see, I see neither Jordan nor Egypt as models of a democratic society or democratic government, which I hope that independent Palestine will become. So um, if we're going to sit and wait for Arab unity, then we're all going to get old and die before that ever happens, no, unfortunately. I wish they would play a more positive role. Actually, you are right. We have to uh, uh, look for our strategic depth. It is actually in Jordan and in Egypt and the neighboring countries. We have to, get, we have to be helped by them, and they actually are interfering on our behalf, no. uh, uh, especially Egypt during the last crisis, Jordan, and uh, th th there are very good relations with both of them. Okay, we're going to take a question from the gentleman in the front row, please. My question is for the opposition. Uh, the uh, reason uh, given several times over and over uh, this evening uh, for defending uh, your positions was that it's very difficult to build proper, efficient, and transparent institutions against these uh, current odds and the situation. Um, my question is, um, don't you think that you have an example that contradicts your points sitting right across the border from you, which is Israel. They, at some point, only half a century ago, were considered to have almost nothing, no state, and were building institutions against impossible odds, and now they've managed it and turned the tables around. Sorry, Magdis. Well, I mean, the, again, the, the point is that this discussion is not about, the, the, the question we're debating is not about the PA or the Palestinian government. We were talking about a Palestinian people, not a government. And the part of what's happened since 1948, as you know, is that most Palestinians no longer live on the land to which they want to return. So the point is to be able to reconnect the people with the land, the people with each other. That's what, that's what this is ultimately all Sorry, about. I'm, Sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, when, we, when you say the donor communities, you don't mean my colleagues who work with me in Berlin. You mean the government. So when we talk about the Palestinians, I'm not talking about me or you. I'm talking about the Palestinian leadership. Yeah, but let's remember when Israel was established, it was all these, you know, intellectuals of the West who came and who knew how to build institutions. Okay, and, let's, and let's hear from the question. Unfortunately, we are in the third world and we're learning. Okay, let's hear from the question. If you could stand up, please. I, I can't believe that that was your response. You're basically saying that, okay, well, let's wait until we're given a state and then we can sit down and talk about this again. Is that your answer? Do you want people to hand you over a state instead of you going and actively building one? No, but, this, but, the, mean, but you're talking about building institutions. <laughs> Hang on. This is a very important point. You don't build institutions in the sky. You build them on land. States don't exist in textbook form. States exist in connection to territory. So the whole idea that you can have a Palestinian government that's, not, that's being held accountable for all kinds of wrongdoings, that doesn't control a territory, is delusional. That's not a state. You can't compare that state to the Federal Republic of Germany. This is that's not the what kind he's of telling you is the first uh, uh, Zionist convention took place in Basel, Switzerland, and uh, when they started the Karen Kemet and all these institutions, uh, the uh, Jewish agency, they were not even in Palestine. They were overseas. They were able to form institutions. They came. They fought. They established. We should be able to fight for our state. Actually, it's not only should be given to us. We should take it from the mouth of the lion because he's, nobody's going to hand anything for you. What you have to do is you grab it and you will take it if you have the will to do it. But if you sit back and say, well, I wait until they give me the land and I will wait until I build the state, this is not the logic. I mean, this is not fair. People fight 
for okay. their rights and they achieve them. Oh, let's let, the let Helen Khoury yeah. 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 say something. Where are we here? All the efforts that would, all the prices paid by Palestinians to free Palestine, to establish a state, it was a very high price. We paid with our blood, we paid with the life of our young ones. We, we paid, people paid by their own health that they became handicapped. This is not fair. You know, what we, we, you know, we have really established a good civil society, we have established institutions that work, but we don't have control over the environment. We build something one day, it gets okay. destroyed the All next right. day. Okay, I'm going to take, mean, okay. You know, if we don't have power, you can't continue with your project. We're going to take a question from the gentleman in the third row. Yes, you. Yeah. I have been to Gaza. I've seen the squalor in which the vast majority of Gazans live. And I think it's far-fetched, to say the least, to belittle the effects of corruption and mismanagement on the part of the Palestinian Authority. And three out of four appear to acknowledge it. You don't, madam. Perhaps it's because you don't have to uh, fend for yourself in Gaza. Uh, you can go to the boutiques of Paris and buy your, your very elegant outfits. This is not meant as a criticism, but what I think this motion does provide us with is a very important opportunity to take stock and do that which very few people want to do, which is face reality and recognize that there is the very grave danger, if it hasn't already been realized, of the leadership of the Palestinians, and this motion is directed towards the leadership of the Palestinians, Actually, becoming the Palestinians' right. worst enemies. I, I, I didn't deny that there were corruption. It was. But this isn't the main problem. The main problem is that we have no independence to control our lives and to take decisions to improve that life. We, we have a margin, and now this government is delivering a lot on that margin. And I don't go around only shopping in Paris. I've been there only for two years. I know what it is living in Jerusalem. I live, I cross the checkpoint every day for 15 years to take my children to school You're not and to come in Gaza, back. Are you? I'm sorry. You know? And Forgive I've me. been to Gaza. I know what Gaza is like probably more than you do, so please, I know the misery that we live in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on to a questioner in the third row. Thank you. How legitimate do you think is a movement that cannot stay united? How viable is this noble cause that we keep talking about if it's not even able to get itself, get its act together and stop looking like chickens with their heads cut off, mm -hmm. with their heads cut, uh, cut off, and you know, they fight, they bicker, and they have nothing to show at the okay, end of the day. Okay, let's ask Yeah, to yeah I agree that. that the image of this inside fighting is, is shameful, is unacceptable, but this is not just a noble cause. This is people, you know, four million people living under occupation who seek a life, a decent life, a life with some dignity and some freedom. It's very simple, and it's every right. It's also all these six other million people who seek to be home and just to be able to visit their parents if necessary to live there. So the, the Palestinians is not just about the bickering between Fatah and Hamas. It's a national movement, I agree. I think we are at the lower end of the national movement. There hasn't been renovation within the PLO, within some of the parties like Fatah, for 15 years now, since Oslo was signed. And that's very unhealthy. And this is the price we're paying today. Are you happy this with that answer? This has got to be corrected. We need to have elections. We need to ha give young people the chance to be Stand part up. of the decision making. The elites that you all represent have not given any program, any solid program. Arafat goes to um, De Camp David. OK, he's given bad solutions. But he has no program when he goes there. Mm -hmm. And it's the same case with Salam Fayyad. It's the same thing with Mahmoud Abbas. And it will continue forever unless people get their acts together. And you have no solid program. Mm -hmm. sorry, 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 Magdisi. Sorry, Magdisi. I want you to come but, in in this place. Again. The point is, we should not, for all the criticisms you're making of the Palestinian leadership, and I agree with them, and I agree with everything that's been said about the leadership in general here, the point is, the Palestinians are not their leadership. So when we're talking about the Palestinians risking becoming their own worst enemies, you can't say this squabbling bunch of leaders is the Palestinian people, because they're not. They're a bunch of leaders. The people are a totally different thing. Okay, we've come to the point in the proceedings where we're going to vote on the motion that this House believes that the Palestinians risk becoming their own worst enemy. If you want to vote for the motion, uh, that is the side represented by Akram Baka and Muntha Dajani. Will you please press button one, the yellow one, on your voting machines. If you want to vote against the motion, that is the side represented by Hind Khoury and Sari Magdisi, would you please press button two, the red one, and would you do that now? You only have to press once. There are the results coming up on the screen.
The motion, 70.9% for the motion, 29.1% against. The motion has been resoundingly carried. It just remains for me to thank very much our distinguished panel, who have come a long way to be here and a lot of effort to be here. Thank you very much indeed. Our thanks to you, the audience. The Doha debates will be back again in a month's time. Till then, from all of us on the team, thanks for coming tonight. Good night.